Well, hello, hello from a little chilly airport in central Alberta, Drayton Valley, actually. And uh, last night I was out here doing a bit of a, a nice sunset shot. So you'll see a couple of them in the gallery. Um, and while I was out here, I met a very nice chap who lives here and he gave me permission to come back and do some shots whenever I like, as long as I behave myself and uh, don't get any away in the way of any uh, uh, obvious air traffic that might turn up. It's pretty slim pickings here for air traffic, but just like the aircraft. But if uh, that ever happens, I will be well and truly out of the way. I'm not an idiot. I don't want to play with an air shredder. So uh, that said, uh, this morning, beautiful clear morning, beautiful clear morning. Unfortunately, there's a half moon out, which is kind of um, killing nighttime photography a little bit. But you do what you can with what you've got. So uh, I've been out there on the tarmac. Uh, there's a few planes uh, tied down, well, truly tied down for the winter season. Um, and I'm using them as props uh, in the foreground and doing some uh, starry backgrounds uh, just to see how they turn out. Um, although this is quite a nice morning for this, like I said, the moon is uh, a little bit of a distraction. Um, this is more of a scouting, kind of look around things, see what I can do here. I did a little bit of light painting on the side of the planes, um, just to see how uh, they looked. So this is all just pictures, just sizing up what potential there is here. And this is the kind of thing you have to do every now and again, is come out and take pictures and just put them in the old memory bank and think to yourself, well, in the fall, if I'm looking for colors, in the fall I'll come back here and maybe that tree will look a bit better. Or if I come back in the morning when there's a nice sunset behind it, or a sunrise, or in the evening and the sunset, you know, depending on where things are. And you've got to prepare long range for things like this. Um, I know at the end of this month, this is December we're in, um, 2020, uh, at the end of this month, the Saturn and Jupiter are going to be almost on top of each other in the night sky. And although that's not a fantastic thing to look at, um, it's just a bit bright starish to look at, it is something to uh, to um, put in the memory bank and think, well, you know, can I put that somewhere in the sky uh, with something interesting underneath it, you know? The same way as when I did the uh, Neowise Comet, I put it over a pump jack. Um, so it had some relevance um, and that's what you're kind of looking for I think in some of these shots there's nothing uh, there's nothing too hard here you know you just put the camera on a tripod for nighttime shots um, you dial in 10 15 seconds and you put your two second timer on hit the button step back and then look at the live screen on the back and see what you got if it's too dark add a few more seconds or open the aperture up a bit more you know it's all kind of guesswork and it's all learning and that's what you have to do you know um, if you want to get the maximum out of this uh, enjoyment that we call photography and um, and on the way you you do get to see some nice things uh, and experience some nice experiences on the way like this morning coming here it's only a short five minute drive for me but it is through some wooded areas and at this moment, the, the deer rut is on, so the stags or bucks, uh, as they call them here, are jumping all over the place looking for does. And lo and behold, as I turn around the corner there, there's two bucks um, just crossing the road in front of me. And I had to slow down and let those boys go over because I don't want to damage the car or have an accident at six o'clock in the morning uh, on a very quiet road. It doesn't have a very good scenario really but on the upside as I turned in here I thought oh what's that so somebody's dogs out or something like this as this little thing scarpered across the road and I stopped and I got my eyes adjusted to the side uh, of the road and looking back at me was a nice little fluffy fox um, so there you go I mean I don't get to catch these things on camera but I I do get to see them and and that's part and parcel of the whole experience here you get outside you have uh, those little experiences those little memorable moments a little interaction of an animal stopping looking back at you and you just saying wow look at you you're incredible 
and then it moves on, you know, and you hopefully never pass crosses again uh, and, until, you know, a time you've got a camera in your hand, you're ready for it. Um, but, you know, and then you get out here and you stand under all these stars, the Milky Way's there, you know, okay, the moon's there tonight as well, but it still looks nice too. Um, there's a good cool breeze, it's only minus one for December, it's extremely warm for us here. This should be about minus 12, minus 15. Um, so I'm, I'm lucky in that sense. Uh, I can actually run around here and do some photography without having to keep coming back to the car and warm up like I am just now. I'm only doing one little warm up here just now before I go back out for the sunrise. Unfortunately, there's no clouds, so I'm kind of going to look for some pastel colors and maybe put them behind the plane or something like that as it slowly comes up the sunshine. Venus is looking particularly nice there just now. You'll see that in one of the photographs, I hope. Um, just a very bright star low on the horizon. There's also a comet, supposedly, uh, up and right from uh, Venus, and I'll scour my uh, images to see if I can find it. I was trying to locate it, uh, but the instructions for where it is are kind of vague, and I think it's later on in the month that it's supposed to be a better view, so I might be in the wrong area. I don't know. It's not a very high visibility uh, comet, so not to worry, just things to look for. So, six o'clock, it's an early start. Sunrise is 8.20 here. So, um, you know, you have to get up early. You have to push yourself a little bit. Um, times are a little bit awkward right now. COVID is on the go. Um, rates are rising all around the world, really. Um, the second wave is well and truly established itself. In this province, in Canada, uh, we are quite high and several people in the area have COVID uh, and one or two are hospitalized and obviously thoughts go out to them and their families. Nobody wants to be sick with this thing, even if some people think it's nothing worse than the flu. I don't know about you. I don't like the flu, so why would you risk it? I don't know. But uh, it's still nice to get yourself outside into the countryside under a dark sky, looking up at the stars and just taking a few seconds to forget everything and just enjoy the moment. Be who you are, where you are, with what you have just around you. And then to come back and get a nice cup of coffee out your <laughs> car. <laughs> it, uh, it really is nice. So, on that note, I will cut and leave you at this point. Um, and uh, I'll show you around once the sun is up. I'll show you a little bit more of the plains and the scenery that I have to work with here, which during the day, I don't really think is fantastic. But at night, as you can see, when you close in on certain details, like a single plane and stuff like this, um, it actually turns into quite an interesting place. Um, the darkness does help a lot uh, in situations like this. So with that said, I'll enjoy my coffee and uh, maybe a granola bar while I wait for this lovely sunrise to come up, which is not too far away now. Uh, well, it's nearly an hour, but it's quite a bit of light coming on the horizon already. Oh well. Well, as promised, I thought I'd show you a little bit of what's going on around here at the airport. So uh, let me just flip my round. There we go. So we've got, as we can see here, a nice little sunrise coming up, but true to form, no clouds. So it's just the glow, really just the glow we're looking for here. So we've got this lovely little light aircraft here. And here's another one. You'll see these in the gallery with the nighttime shots. And we've got the camera set up here, nice and low. And the reason for this is there's the shot in the frame. But if you look there very carefully towards the wingtip, the colors are just going underneath the wingtip there and reflecting off the underside of the wing. And I think that's quite nice, little accent. And so when you're out here doing things like this, uh, it's a bit breezy here. Not too breezy, but it's enough to give you a chill. When you're out here doing stuff like this, you want to uh, look for low angles, 
uh, unusual angles. Don't always stick with the, I'm up at this level, eye level. Um, that's one of the biggest mistakes most people make, is just shooting from eye level. Bend your knees, that's what they're for. <laughs> Bend your knees, get down low. As you can see here where the tripod here is nice and low. I'm shooting down and slightly up. And I've taken in part of the plane, not all of the plane. You know, the the emphasis here is on the sunrise and the colours. But the plane just adds a little bit of interest in the foreground. Um, you take several shots, one under, one over, one on. Blend them together for exposure correction. Because the plane is really dark in a standard frame. Um, or very overexposed sky so it's hard for the camera to work out what's going on so you have to play around in Lightroom and get some tricks going as you can see here I'm shaking a little bit <laughs> it is a bit chilly that uh, sunrise the temperature always you'll find drops a few degrees and uh, you feel it then uh, and once the sun does get up it starts to warm up properly but for some reason that always happens I've noticed that when it's dark it's cold but it's not too bad um, and then the sunrise comes along and all of a sudden we're getting chilly and then once the sun's up eh, things settle down again but there you go so on to the other camera there there we go uh, this camera here the the uh, Pentax K70 and it's just got the stock lens on um, the 28 to 70 mil lens and uh, you know you can do quite a lot with just the standard equipment that you buy out of, out of the store you know it's not terribly expensive that's less than a thousand dollars that camera and it's capable of huge quantities of stuff that you can play around with but this is the um, I don't know you call this the parking bay <laughs> for the aircraft they taxi down this little bit of a runway here. The main runway is on the background there. You can see the windsock is there. And they, they usually, depending on the wind direction, I guess, but they're usually down there. And then they scootle along here. And then, oops, camera focus. Oops, lost it. I'll try again. There we go. Towards that flashing light there, which is actually just some trees in front of a, street lamp or something um, up towards there is the end of the runway uh, nice wide open space huge quantity of sky and right now if I just go along here you will have seen in the sunset images these four trees that are now defoliaged in the winter and just looking like skeletons in the sky they're beautiful um, they look quite good against that sun set that I did last night and there's the terminal building a little rattly just now as uh, one or two things have succumbed to the elements it's a quiet little provincial uh, airport uh, people fly in and out and some private people live here with planes and uh, it's cute and I'm very privileged to have permission to wander around like this and take some pictures of the things that I'm taking pictures of and uh, there you go so that's my morning I started early got some stars and planes and uh, scouted out this um, Venus is uh, in the sky there uh, it was just under just over the wingtip of the uh, plane if you're looking for a, a bright star in the morning sky so there you go so as always, everybody take care, look after each other, and uh, it's been a while since I did a video, but uh, this new camera has been keeping me busy. I've been learning all of its features, and there are a lot of features on this thing, um, and I'm still not finished learning it. Um, the placement of buttons and things is a little different from the other camera, but generally speaking, the menu system is the same, so that's easy to, to get into. All my lenses work with it. That was the whole point of buying another Pentax because I don't have to buy more glass. And glass is expensive if you buy some really high quality stuff. But it doesn't matter if you're a Pentax user, a Canon user, a Nikon user, or Olympus or anything. 
Um, at the end of the day, you could even use this thing, the cell phone. Um, just get out here. Just take yourself away for a few seconds. Look at this. I'll show you this again. Just look at these colors. Little star, which is actually Venus. And just forget everything else, just for a moment. And it'll revitalize you. It'll revitalize you. And, oh, as I said, there's a little half moon up there. There you go. Okay, this time. Take care. Everybody, have fun, be safe, and enjoy life as best you can. Thanks for watching. Now, over to the gallery. And as I said, sunset pictures from the night before, and then some morning pictures with the stars and planes. Thank you. Bonus footage. Ah, just the <laughs> shower just closed there. Um, sun, as you can see, is just coming up. Look at that. That's a nice shot. <laughs> this pump jack is just buzzing away. I was just talking to the operator, so I got permission to be here too. I'm so good with the permission system. Anyway, look at this beautiful thing. Isn't that sweet? And the sun is just lighting it up, and it looks gorgeous. So, take advantage of whatever you can find when the sun's coming up. It all looks gorgeous. <laughs>